off with the logo, Mom. So, do you know your cube logos? Um, I'd say if it wasn't for me looking through the slides, I'd say I wouldn't recognize the logo. Okay, so comment down below what you think this logo is. Um, I'm gonna see how many of you get it right in five seconds. And it is Diane Cheng. Thoughts on Diane Cheng in general? Oh, so I've I've heard of Diane Cheng before. I've heard the name, hundred percent. Yeah. And I, I can't get that out of my head. But I haven't felt any of their cubes. I don't think. <laughs> before. Was, yeah, me neither. So. They've come out with a new budget series. We'll call it the Dian Cheng Galaxy series. Um, thoughts on this initial image? Two by two through five by five. Oh yeah, two by two through five by five. It looks as though it might be me, but five by five looks very small. It is very small. It's only. I'm pretty sure it's only one millimeter larger. We'll go into dimensions in a bit. But it is, yeah, quite small. Yeah, the centre cap design looks a little, a little bit weird as well. Yes, I agree. Moving on, so we've got a fairly standard core design here. Just standard springs and screws. But here's where things get interesting. And this is a honeycomb design. What are your thoughts? Okay, so... Clearly, they've put the honeycomb design on only one face of the entire cube. It's it's on certain size. Certain yeah, pieces. certain size of pieces is what I meant. Yeah. But clearly they like the design and obviously it's not really copying because it's not really a honeycomb design. It is, it is very, it's very similar, similar to a honeycomb so, design. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, yeah. Budget honeycomb. Very, very interesting. So it, it looks as if they've created this unique design that it's got a honeycomb on one face, but then it interacts with a side without honeycomb. Yeah. So they haven't gone double honeycomb there, so that's, that's an interesting thing. Um, anything else to mention off this image? Fairly simple mechanism. Yeah, and very simple. Screw yeah. and spring and the honeycomb design, which obviously reduces friction and uh, uh, chops the lube within the cube and it spread it evenly. And so there's nothing much to say here except for the centre cap design again. And that's probably just for an easy removability. So we'll have a look at that centre cap in a bit. Here's an image of the magnets, fairly standard stuff there. Um, so the way the magnets interact, fairly standard again. So nothing too stand out at the moment, but we'll have to see as we go into features. Um, corner cutting, 55 forwards and 30 reverse. So most companies yeah. pretty much have 55 forwards and 30 reverse. What do you think? Yeah, I think the whole 55 forward seems pretty good. And the 30 yeah. reverse also seems as good. And I think that's pretty standard. They probably loosen the cubes as much as possible to get the best corner kind. Which obviously in practice isn't very good. But we'll have to see in practice how it cuts. Squared yeah. off corners and that strange centre cap design again. The plastic comes across as a frosted plastic. Yeah, frosted plastic. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I'm not a fan of frost plastic, but it's not a big yeah. deal to me, unless it's on like certain other cubes like Scube or Pyraminx, then obviously, yeah. obviously the cube's very slippery and it isn't very nice to, to, um, to turn at all. But on 3x3s, three I don't mind, because obviously you can kind of like, um, how would you say, like just break in the frosted plastic, yeah. should we say? I think, I think the thing that will be the main concern of this cube is the quality of the plastic. So yeah. if it's uh, low quality, as we would say, like really hard and clacky, um, then that won't be very popular. But cubes like the RS3M 2020 has very good quality plastic. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, so here's an up close of the center cap design. Yeah. So it's, it's really weird. It's like inside the centerpiece. Yeah, I see that. I think it's obviously it's just for I think it's just for easy removability. Yeah. I don't think they're gonna be attaching some sort of um Dan Sheng robot to it. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's just for really easy removability, know. although it does look strange. It does look very strange, but it does seem much easier to remove 
than yeah. typical centre caps, where you have to like dig your nails into the piece and mm. pull it out. This one is just like from the outside, you just have to pluck it off. Very simple, which is what I like. Okay, moving on, we see the image of the honeycomb design there. Yes. They're putting in mm. with an edge and a corner. What are your thoughts? So this, is, this is interesting. So, obviously, in order to get this into the mold, that requires a bit of effort, right? You can't, it requires more effort than having just a simple flat mold yeah. um, for the pieces. Um, so the injection molding seems decent, like the quality of the plastic up close. You can see a bit of like grains here and there, but otherwise pretty good. Um, but yeah, very strange. It's not quite honeycomb, it's more like just blobby. <laughs> yeah, like it, it doesn't have any like specific design to it, should we say? Yeah. But it's going along the same lines. Okay, so this is the comparison of all three honeycomb designs we've seen so far. Dan Sheng on the left, MS Cube in the middle, and the original Gan on the right. Yep. So obviously the standout is obviously the middle one, but the honeycomb and the Dan Sheng look pretty similar, but they're all different in their own way. Indeed. So the blobby one, I'll call it the blobby one, the one on the left, has a lot larger crevices between the inside the piece. Yeah, I see that. Compared to the cobweb and the honeycomb. The honeycomb's way more subtle, and I think the cobweb is also fairly subtle, but this is very distinct. Mm. Like, there's very thick ridges. If you had to rank these in order, which order would you put them in? MS Cube first, yeah. then Gan, then Gan Sheng last, that's it. I, I don't know why it's about the, blo the blobby one. It looks cool, but messy almost. I don't know. I don't know how to explain yeah. it, but... Perhaps that's just because it's on um, a multicoloured piece. Yeah. Possibly. So obviously the rest are on black pieces, but I don't think that's yeah. the case. The fact that they're able to put that development into a cube. Yeah. Being dying chain, not as big in the international cubing market. Still very impressive. Yeah, very impressive indeed. Okay, and so we'll move is... on to the stats. Okay, so I'll talk you through this. So this is the non-magnetic cube cubes should i say so from two to four five and here are the weights and the sizes any standouts here before we have a look at them okay the five by five is 61 millimeters yes and the four by four is 60 millimeters indeed and that is a big standout the four by it the is... two by two is heavier than the three by three yeah so that's also a big standout by four mm -hmm. grams which is actually quite a lot of weight and yeah. uh 55 millimeters with the three by three that's pretty good yeah and 50 for the two by two okay so i'll talk you like the main notable points from this slide so we've got 64 grams for a two by two yeah that is very very heavy the mail long m is 54 grams Ooh. The, and then the ms is 58 grams which I think is the perfect weight. Like I, I like the weight of the MS. Yeah. So I think that high 50s is perfect. Um, however, it is lighter than the RS2M, which is 78. But then, then again, this is the non-magnetic version. So it's expected to be lighter than a magnetic 2x2. Second big point, 55 millimeters. So the way long WRM is 55 millimeters. Mm. The size of that, I think, is okay. I think some people will like it, some people won't. What are your thoughts on 55 millimetres? I think 55 millimetres, that was the the WRM size, wasn't it? It was, yeah. WRM 2020. I mm -hmm. didn't make that cube but because of the size. Was it too small? I'd say it was a tad too small. I was kind of disappointed, but it's still a good one-handed cube, even though I'm not good at one handed or anything. Interesting. But it was still a good cube, nice and fast controllable but i think 55 millimeters was a bit small so we'll just have to see yeah. this that's that's an interesting thought yeah so i initially didn't like 55 millimeters but now i'm kind of getting back into it um it depends on the cube of course but 55 millimeters is 60 grams which is quite light so it's lighter than the Maylong 3 which i thought was pretty light um we'll have a look at the magnetic stats as well they'll be interesting to look at and then finally the 109 grams for the 5x5. Five five. So 
the male on five is 112 grams. And Ooh. that is that feels pretty light. So it? this must be lighter on new level. Yes. Wait, is this is this actually smaller than the male on um, five? Um I think it's the same size. Oh, well, because I actually made that because of its size. Yeah. So I'm mm. pretty sure it's either the same size or like half a millimetre bigger. But it is still smaller than standard 5x5s, which are usually 62 millimetres. Um, but yeah, that's very interesting. Okay, yes, so, so the magnetic cubes instead? The magnetic instead. cubes, yes. Okay, so sizes are obviously the same, except yeah. now the 2x2 two two was 67 grams. Compared to the 64 grams from before. Yeah, compared to the 66 grams of this Diane Shag magnetic 3x3. Three three. So it's still heavier. So, yeah, that was 60 grams. Yeah. And then the 5x5 five five was 116 grams compared to the 109 grams. Yep. That's a big difference. As well as the 4x4 four four weighing 111 grams compared to 104. Yes. So let's talk through that. So the main talking points here are the 2x2 two two and the 3x3. Three three. So 2x2, two two, extremely heavy. The heaviest, one of the heaviest 2x2s two on the market are, is the RS2M, which I'm get actually, wait a minute, the RS2M is 78 grams. Whoa. Whoa, that is That's heavy. I did, not, I did not expect that. But yeah, so 67 grams, that's heavier than some 3x3s three three on the market. Um, so it is quite heavy. Um, it's even heavier than their 3x3, three three, which is kind of amusing. Um, their 3x3s... Three three 66 grams, which is quite interesting. So 66 grams, that compares to... Let's have a look. So a GAN XS is 68 grams. 68? Yep, yeah, it's lighter than the GAN XS. Oh, okay. Um, it's heavier than the 11M Pro by 3 grams. Yeah. And it's lighter than the Maylong okay. by 6 grams. The Maylong 72. And then the Guhong V4 is half a gram lighter. So it's right in there with the light 3 by 3s so That's interesting. 66 grams. What's your, your current main is the 11M Pro, right? Yeah, my current main is the 11M Pro. So my backup main is the GAN 56 X V2 stickless as well. So that's good. Ooh. Yeah, I'd say that's a bit heavier, but... Six, so you're, lo you're used to the lighter weight. I'm also used yeah. to the light weight. I'm using the ARM, which is pretty much... The same weight as the XS. The other two yeah. are pretty heavy, like pretty middle of the road. The 4x4 and the 5x5. So let's move on. So this is what some okay. of the retail packaging would look like. Yeah. So this is the packaging of the box, the box design of the Diane yeah. Chen cubes. So I know you like your box design. Yeah, okay. So the top ones look to be the non magnetic ones. Yeah. And the bottom ones are all the magnetic ones. So the bottom ones look very similar to the Melon cubes. Like very yes. similar. Yeah. Like Except the different colour instead. Yeah, when I found this image, like the first thing that came out to me was like Melon. Yeah. Like it's it's very easy to mistake with the Melon. They like got like the style of um branding. Nothing much to say in terms of box design. It does come across as budget. I doubt they'll be very premium cubes. Overall thoughts. So, in general, there's two main pointers. The centre caps, I'll go, I'll skim back. This honeycomb design, or blobby design, I will call it, as well as this centre cap. They're the two main things. The centre caps, what makes it unique and makes it memorable. And then the, the blobby design, as we will call it, will be a very interesting thing to test. I've seen the 4x4 four, four four and 5x5 five five in action, and the reverse corn curtain isn't looking too great, unfortunately. Ooh, I don't know okay. if you've seen it. I don't. But, I don't think I've seen that video. No. No, the big problem with big cubes is reverse corner cutting. Okay, so my overall thoughts. Yep. Diane Sheng are coming back with the, this. What seems to be budget series. Yes. Center cap design. What they're going to be known for the blob honeycomb design, is a good way of trialing the actual X. Um the actual GAN honeycomb design and it'll yeah. be interesting to see if because of this um budget introduction this budget honeycomb introduction 
yeah. that other people start doing the same thing just with different um, designs like yes. how MS Cube because people are starting to kind of replicate should we say the honeycomb design so that'll be interesting very very interesting so let us know down in the comments below what do you think of this new Diane Sheng series we'll call it the galaxy series um, would you like to see it in the cubicle or in our market currently it's only available in China but would you like to see it in our market if so let us know down below and whilst there be sure to hit that subscribe button that'll be greatly appreciated and use called Cuban Critics which give you a chunky percent off on your the cubicle order very interesting